Hi everyone, I'm Lorraine Driscoll and this is another episode of Building Better Brains where each week we talk about the root causes of why your child might be having a hard time learning, reading and behaving and what could be some solutions that get kind of reach past the limitations of IEPs, endless tutoring and medication. So last couple of weeks I've been talking about dysgraphia and uh, what some causes are and how you can address that and so forth. And before that I talked for weeks and weeks and weeks about dyslexia for Dyslexia Awareness Month. And today I want to talk about the connection between nutritional deficiencies and dyslexia. So the connection between deficiencies and dyslexia is huge. It's been, um, you know, like the research is just phenomenal. And it's one of the areas that we so often don't even look at or is not given really a second glance when it comes to addressing dyslexia and other reading disorders. <clears throat> so when a child, for example, gets an ADHD diagnosis, um, you know, it's not uncommon to for people to understand that nutritional deficiencies and food preservatives and so forth could be exasperating or contributing to some of these behaviors. Um, there's not a whole lot of skepticism around that anymore that I'm seeing that that can play a role. Whenever I mention that to parents or to anybody that nutrient deficiencies and dyslexia have a huge connection, there's a lot more skepticism even with clients when I first start working with them and I tell them that my six month program, you know, tackles that first to make sure the brain is getting what it needs in order to make the changes that we're going to be doing with the cognitive therapies. And this is really unfortunate because there is piles and piles and piles of research that dates back decades on, um, on the connection between nutritional deficiencies and dyslexia. And in fact, the more severe the deficiency, the research generally found that, that the, the more severe was the dyslexia. So what's crazy is that almost all of us have heard now, for example, about food coloring and the connection between ADHD. There's also been a connection with food coloring and red dye with um, increased or worsening dyslexia. And that totally makes sense to me because when you talk to people who've been, who, who've, you know, lived with dyslexia for years, they'll say, well, I have good days and I have bad days. Like some days it's just awful and other days it's pretty darn good. And, um, you know, if a mother comes in and tells me, you know, my child's had an ADHD diagnosis, it's not uncommon for her to know that she wants to look at food or nutrition. She wants to look at exercise. She wants to look at sleep. She wants to um, address less, you know, have less screen time and more movement before going on to medication. Whenever there's a dyslexia diagnosis, that's rarely the path that we decide to take. Um, it's just viewed very differently from ADHD. So it's just kind of seen as this permanent disorder. It's a brain structure, it's genetic. Um, and ADHD is just viewed with so much more flexibility and so many more options and so much more hope. And it's seen as a more medical type issue with different treatment options, whereas dyslexia, you know, you, you really don't even need to see your doctor to get a diagnosis. You can go see um, you know, the school might give your child a diagnosis through the school psychologist, or you can pay for your own psychologist who does psychoed evaluations to get these diagnoses of like some kind of reading disorder and so forth. And so it's not considered a medical issue. And um, so it's just treated so much differently. And yet the studies that treated it, um, you know, or address the fact that deficiencies could be playing a role have phenomenal results, like A++ results in terms of turning dyslexia around. So supplementation in the control group in various studies, for example, um, the amazing research of Dr. Jacqueline Storty, who both addressed dis, um, study dyslexia and dyspraxia because they have a lot of commonalities. Um, so there was results or improvement, I should say, in visual processing, phonemic awareness, word rec recognition, uh, working memory, um, and many other facets that are related to being able to read fluently. And in some cases, or in many cases actually, the reading fluency or the word recognition decoding improved like 60% in within three to six months. And I'm going to post um, in the next couple of weeks all of these studies um, at the end of my articles that I'll be writing about this type about how nutrition impacts dyslexia. Um, so you can check those studies out for yourself. 
So whenever you get that psychoed evaluation done and, um, you know, maybe your child has a diagnosis of, um, you know, a language based learning disability, which in Canada in general, we're not usually really using the term dyslexia in psychoed evaluations. Um, you might see terms like weak um, auditory processing, poor visual processing, weak phonemic awareness, weak executive functioning. And researchers have found some pretty concrete reasons um, why these particular areas of the brain are not working optimally. And for sure, in previous episodes, I've talked about, you know, a primitive reflex integration. I've talked about the importance of um, how movement develops the brain and those early movements like creeping and crawling, how much that can play a role in increasing the risk of ADHD and dyslexia and so forth. But nutritional deficiencies is huge. And um, it's it just kind of drives me crazy that um, the evidence is all there and it's rarely given the attention that it so desperately needs. And if we skip uh, nutrition and nutrient therapy, then we are leaving a huge uh, piece of the puzzle out. And um, it doesn't mean you're not going to get results with just reading therapy on its own, but you might get suboptimal results or it might take longer to address. Um, you know, definitely we want to address missed milestones in early development, but we definitely want to address nutrition as well. So you might be wondering by now, what are those key nutrients? Please tell me. Um, there's actually eight. So today I'm going to address four and then next week I'm going to address four more. The number one nutrient that I look at whenever I um, look at dyslexia, and this is based on what all of the research and the hundreds of studies that have been done on it have found, is omega-3s, DHA, um, is what I call the dyslexia nutrient. And if you've read up anything about possible connections between dyslexia and nutrition, you will know that um, DHA and, or omega-3 plays a huge role and has been found to uh, improve not just dyslexia, but learning ability and so much more. And again, on this topic, studies from 30 years ago and more has found a very strong connection between omega-3 deficiency and dyslexia. <clears throat> it is the number one nutrient deficiency in dyslexia. So you might be wondering, well, what's the causes? Because a lot of parents can get really confused where, um, you know, they'll say, well, we're all eating a healthy diet. We're all eating the same diet. I have three kids. Why is this kid deficient? So I'm going to get into that in a minute. But first I want to say, first of all, our diets are much higher in omega-6s today compared to 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago and on because our um, diet is just filled with all kinds of processed foods. We're not eating, um, you know, for example, oily fish. We're not eating grass-fed meat. Grass-fed meat is really rich in omega-3s. Grain-fed meat is really high in omega-6s. Um, so a lot of the oils and fats we're eating are um, just high in omega-6s. So there's that major imbalance between, you know, omega-3s and omega-6s. Um, also, they found uh, whenever they did these studies that there was often insufficient intake of omega-3s during pregnancy when the baby's brain and eyes are developing in utero. And so that's obviously going to impact, um, you know, if they're not getting those building blocks. And then the other factor that is so important to address is um, I want to state first, yes, there is a genetic component with dyslexia, but they have not actually ever been able to say there's a dyslexia gene. Um, because there's just so many genes that can contribute to areas of breakdown in the brain um, of why these processes are not occurring as fluently as, as someone who doesn't have these difficulties. What we do know is that there are several genes that affect the metabolism of key nutrients that are absolutely critical for reading, learning, processing, and all that other type of stuff. So for example, there's a gene that hinders the absorption um, or the conversion of omega-3s into DHA. And um, I'm not going to get into that too much because it's really rich in biochemistry and I'm, I'm going to try to kind of break it down in future videos in terms of how the genetics play out and how you can kind of dig into that a little bit. But what I do suggest is if you have a child with um, dyslexia or a reading disorder, I would definitely look into omega-3s um, with a higher DHA to EPA. Um, you know, there's a lot of supplements that we have to be careful with. Most of us are deficient in omega-3s and it's super great for the immune system, especially at this time of the year. So the next one is zinc. And in 1989, a study found that the sweat of dyslexic children was seriously deficient in zinc. 
um, and they found that their hair, these children's hair and sweat, not only was seriously deficient in zinc, but it contained really high concentrations of lead and mercury. And um, what's interesting is that not only is, will that can that toxicity contribute to learning disorders, dyslexia, and so much more, but whenever there's a zinc deficiency, the body will, instead of detoxifying heavy metals, it will deposit the heavy metals where the zinc should be. So if the zinc, you know, needs to be in the brain, what you're going to end up having possibly is heavy metals in the brain. So um, you can see how there's a lot more than meets the eye whenever we look at uh, dyslexia. And so zinc is a critical nutrient, uh, brain nutrient for learning, memory and processing. Uh, there's been tons of studies on both mice as well as humans for decades as well on zinc and whenever there's a deficiency, how there is impaired memory, processing, reasoning, um, it affects behavior. So the term zinc makes you think is not just a cute little rhyme. <laughs> so zinc is also so critical going back to DHA because it is required in the metabolism of omega-3s into DHA and so forth. So. Um, is there a dyslexia gene? Well, um, again, going back to the fact that there is, just like there is genes that can affect the absorption or metabolism of omega-3s, there is also a gene that can, um, or genes that can affect the metabolism or absorption of zinc. And so if you think that that could be a factor, particularly if there seems to be a strong family history of dyslexia in your family, one way to bypass this is with zinc picolinate. So, I want to also state I wouldn't recommend just kind of diving in and supplementing with the zinc picolinate when you don't know what you're doing. Zinc is a mineral. You do have to be careful with it. Um, you know, you don't want to just follow kind of a cookbook. Uh, I'm not a fan of kind of this is this is the program that everyone should follow. Everyone's different and we have to be uh, very cognizant of that. But zinc picolinate is the most absorbable form and I have seen really good results when I combine the omega-3s with the zinc. So the next nutrient is folate and maybe you've heard of folate or maybe you haven't, but you've probably heard of folic acid. And uh, you know, I remember whenever I was pregnant with my daughter, I took folic acid. We were told it's phenomenal. It's great. We really need it for all kinds of kinds of things. And we can have all kinds of problems if there's not enough. What's really interesting is that folic acid is actually the synthetic vitamin um, that they fortify our food with and that they put um, in vitamins that are subpar and folate is the actual form the, the, vi the real vitamin that is in foods like dark leafy greens liver um, eggs legumes lentils all that type of stuff and um, so kids with dyslexia ADHD autism spectrum it's not uncommon for them to carry a gene called the MTHFR gene which like annoyingly has been labeled the autism or ADHD ADHD gene is present apparently in about 85 to 90 percent of individuals with ASD um, and what is interesting is that the MTHFR gene affects first of all so many biochemical pathways and can cause all kinds of problems with toxicity and biochemistry if it's not um, kind of toned down and managed properly with you know certain key nutrients and so forth but one of the things that really helps to uh, kind of turn that genes effects down, if you will, is the full, is getting enough folate. So what that basically means in a nutshell is that these individuals require uh, more folate for the countless biochemical processes um, that, it, that folate is required to do in the body. And so if they're not getting that, then it's, you're going to have a whole mess with all kinds of health issues as well as learning and behavior. So my first tip is to avoid folic acid at all costs because um, particularly if you or your family member carries the MTHFR gene, uh, for example, just to kind of give you an idea, my daughter has two has two versions of the uh, have versions, if you will, of the MTHFR gene. Um, she got one for me and one for my husband, and um, so folic acid can totally contribute or aggravate or exasperate. Um, the problem, whether it's dyslexia or ADHD. So just trying to get your folate from those natural sources that I mentioned. So the last nutrient that I'm going to talk about today is B vitamins. B6 and B12 um, are really critical as well as other B vitamins for brain function, processing memory, and so forth. B12 is low, you'll have memory problems. So like poor reading comprehension could be connected to that. Um, or even just 
you know, inability to retain um, the phonic sounds and so forth. Now, I'm going to say again, avoid um, without guidance supplementing with B vitamins. Try to get your B vitamins from food and some really great sources that are packed with B, uh, foods that are packed with B vitamins are uh, bee pollen and royal jelly. You can get that in most health food stores. I've even seen it at the bulk barn and they're pretty much, th those are like a B vitamin. It has everything you need in there. And obviously if your child is vegan or vegetarian, you really want to supplement with uh, B12. So to recap, the very two most important supplements or nutrients, I should say, if your child is dyslexic or has a reading disorder is the omega-3s and secondly, the zinc picolinate. Um, and again, always use caution and use guidance when, um, if you're going to supplement rather than get those um, foods or nutrients from food. So my next episode, I'm going to talk about the other four nutrients that you don't want to overlook, uh, which could be deficient and could be contributing to the development or the risk or even, uh, you know, ongoing problems with reading difficulties or disorders. So if you liked my uh, video, please share, hop onto my website to check out uh, what could be some of the underlying causes of your child's learning difficulties. There's a free quiz that you can take to learn a little bit more about what's going on. And um, also there's my program, Reading Rockstar Bootcamp, which is a six month program, which puts together all of the various factors that can contribute to reading disorders and addresses them through both nutritional therapy, as well as cognitive and brain training exercises um, like the LS Works reading, um, reading therapy. And so basically I'm like a personal trainer for your child's brain. We first have to nourish the brain, make sure it's getting everything it needs so that when we start doing cognitive exercises, it can make those changes because it has the building blocks. So thanks for listening. And if you want to set up a free 20 minute call uh, to see if one of my programs would be right for you or to see what's maybe going on with your child and some underlying factors, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching.